How's it going, guys? I'm here with your review of the book of Boba Fett, episode two. And this is why I gave the first episode so much shit. Because uh, even though I liked it, I said that it didn't really have the same bite as the as the first episode of The Mandalorian, either season one or season two. This is exactly why, because this episode was phenomenal. I mean, you want to talk about better in every way, and, you know, I'm kind of going to ease off on the first episode. It set the table well for a good lead-in, and it really focused uh, more so on the flashbacks than even in the first episode, and I was perfectly fine with that. Because if it's going to be this interesting and this engaging, I mean, this was... A pretty engaging episode there was a lot of character development in this episode to say the least and quite a bit of action and uh it, it was like 10 times 20 times more eventful but you could kind of see why they went the way they did in the first episode and a lot of people also complained about the length of the first episode quite frankly length has never been a big concern for me you know, why do you need an episode to be like an hour when, when if sometimes there could be episodes that are, that are good that are 30 minutes. There's plenty of great half an hour shows. So I, I don't know why people focus so much on time. You know, are, are longer movies better than shorter movies? I, I'm sorry, I don't get that argument. But uh, here we got to see like time being used effectively. Like, if this is how we're going to use 50 minutes, this is a good use of 50 minutes at every sense that I could really think of. So, we start off, and I didn't even realize in the first episode that they captured one of those assassins, the ninja-looking dudes. Well, uh, they're called uh, the Assassins of the Nightwind, as it is revealed. They've got a knife to this guy's throat. They've got him kneeling in Jabba's throne room, or now in Boba's throne room, and... He's not going to talk. He's not going to say who sent him. But he, they dump him in the, rank, the, the Rancor pit, which I think was just probably the best thing. And, and I was like, oh, well, you know what? We'll, we'll get to see the, the Rancor. And it's, you know, it's going to be like that nostalgic flashback. And, you know, we haven't seen really any Rancors um, at all. So it, it, it's, it's going to be exciting to say the least. But no Rancor shows up at all. And I, I thought that that was just hilarious. The door opens. The guy's freaking out. And finally he blurts out, the mayor sent him. And, and it's like, oh shit. So it, it, it's it, it's the mayor. And it, th that to me, I started laughing. Because it's like, you really think that you're going to see the Rancor. You're going to finally get, get to see the, this big beast. And he's going to tear this guy limb from limb. And, you know, of course, the mystery is going to keep going from this point. But, no, there's there's no Rancor in there. Pretty clever. Uh, you know, really, anyone who's familiar with Return of the Jedi, and I'm going to assume if you're watching this, you probably are. That was a really funny part, like playing off of something that happened. You know, and also, you think you're going to see it, and they rip it away. But you're not upset because it made you laugh. So anyway, they, they go to see the mayor, they bring this guy with them, they end up killing this dude, and the mayor kind of denies sending him, but kind of doesn't, and says he's not really responsible. They kill him because he's operating outside a hut space, is the excuse. But he tells him to go to the bar, to the lounge that we saw in the first episode, and he's going to get his answers there. And two huts show up, obviously related to Jabba, to say the least and they they've come back because they say they they're supposed to own uh th this land this belongs to them now and boba's not going to give it up and we see he's they've got this badass wookie at their side and uh, this guy is a bounty hunter from the comics i i looked it up i'm not really too familiar i know i've seen this character before you know he's a wookie with super with with black fur I think the design is awesome in live action, and yeah, I mean, I, I've seen him before, I've seen uh, the animation of this dude, and I, th I hope that we get to see him in future episodes, and I, I think we probably will. Um, so, 
There, this is a pretty good exchange. I like this, you know, now the stakes have really been raised. I mean, we're dealing with the, the Huts, ruthless gangsters. They're going to get their revenge. You know, we thought maybe they might, like, not even bother with the Huts. You know, job is gone. They're going to deal with other species and races. And, you know, they will, but we've still got the Huts to worry about because there's... There's tons of huts. We've seen them in the games. We've seen them in the comics. We've seen them in the cartoons. So it makes sense that they would show up here and try to, you know, uh, reclaim what is theirs. I mean, because they're very materialistic, especially when it comes to power and, you know, property. But they kind of back away for now and say, you know, uh, you know, sleep lightly. We're, you know, they're going to be back, obviously. And, you know, Boba is going to be ready for them. So he goes uh, back to sleep in the back to tank, and uh, you know, it, I, I don't know why he always sleeps in there, but this is to recover from his injuries. Even though I don't know if, if he had any battles off screen since then, I don't think so. But anyway, he has these dreams. I don't know, like he he says that he's having the dreams again, but he goes back to sleep in this thing over and over. I mean, you would think this is causing you bad dreams. Maybe you don't sleep in there. I'm just saying, but anyway, we get this flashback, and we don't go back to the present after this, and I was, like I said, I was perfectly fine with this. We see that he is training with these Sand People, with the Tusken Raiders. Um, he's being trained how to fight with the Gaffy Stick until this hover train comes along and starts just uh, blasting a bunch of the Tusken Raiders. And, you know, this is something you don't expect to see. A another element added in here. This, this is like what I was looking for. This is what you expect, you know. If they're only going to have limited episodes, you really want to see a lot happen in these episodes. And that's kind of why I, I was very critical of that first episode. Uh, because here we're just getting layer after layer of stuff being thrown at us. And I thought it was phenomenal how they were doing this. So they shoot up the whole camp. And Boba makes a promise that he is going to um, he, he's going to stop that train. He says that he's going to avenge the Tusken Raiders. He's going to stop that train. Because he sees off in the distance there's some speeder bikes. And we, we see later on at night... Boba's going to what looks like a bar, and I thought it was just like a regular old bar. And I just, I didn't know this until I actually, you know, went online. Like a lot of people, I'm sure a lot of people are going to say that they know, they knew ahead of time what this was. But th this is uh, Tashi Station. Th this is where Luke said he was going to go to Tashi Station and pick up hover converters. And there was a deleted scene, as we saw many years later. And the two characters that we see um seems like a husband and wife or a boyfriend and girlfriend this couple uh they're actually the same actors from that deleted scene and they brought them back which was pretty cool that's really a deep cut as a lot of people were saying online and i'd have to agree because i did not expect to see them here anyway uh boba um uh, uh, does, has a barroom brawl with these guys um he kicks all their asses takes the bikes uh kind of unintentionally saves this couple who's get who's about who's getting roughed up by these guys and uh he he rides back to the tuscan raider camp with the speeders in tow that was a really cool barroom brawl and we got to see some more of tomorrow horse and his great facials when fighting i mean this guy like some of these meme-worthy faces that he does, and it adds to the charm, and I absolutely love it. So he kind of returns the favor, and in in turn for them teaching him how to fight with the gaffy stick, he teaches them how to ride a speeder, and how they're, they're going to have to jump like onto the train, so he has them jumping uh, onto his speeder. And, uh, you know, th this was a pretty humorous because, of course, they're falling, you know, they're not as graceful at first. These guys, you know, with their bulky robes and everything, they're, you know, jumping from speeder to speeder, making for some good comedy. Finally, they go after the train and we get like a really like classic train heist style uh, chase here. They jump onto the train and uh, and, and they face off against these guys and you know that have been 
uh, navigating this thing through the Tatooine deserts. And, uh, and of course, you know, they, they managed to capture them in the end. Boba decides to let them go. And, uh, you know, and he, and he shows that he could be merciful. Uh, overall, like, uh, this was just a flat out fantastic, this whole sequence here. Um, after it's all said and done, uh, the leader of the tribe gives Boba a gift, and it is a lizard. Then he blows some dust, and this lizard goes up his fucking schnoz. I was like, what the hell? You know, uh, definitely something out of the ordinary. Boba starts tripping out. Whoa, dude, you know, like getting a real, like, uh, LSD infused little bit here. And uh, he start, yeah, he starts tripping out. Of what, it's supposed to be what's happening to him is, is reality. So he approaches a tree or like a weird looking tree. And I'm seeing eyes like in the branches, and once again, it reminded me of the of the Bandagora from uh, the Bounty Hunter video game. If anybody remembers, you know those creepy guys with the glowing eyes. But you know, I, I don't know what those guys were, or what that was a reference to. But he takes one of these branches, brings it back to camp, and they end up making his own gaffy stick. But it's like a metal one; it's infused and. I thought it was that was actually them forging the the gaffy stick to me i thought that that looked pretty awesome and not only that they complement this with all the robes that you see him wearing when he first appeared in the mandalorian making for a great lead-in and you know i really appreciate everything that they did here there was a lot of uh character building the tuscan raiders you know kind of humanizing them you know, we saw them in A New Hope, and we just think that they're savages. We see them in The Phantom Menace during the pod race, like, shooting at Anakin. And we just think that, you know, these guys, they're just despicable. You know, they're, they're just bandits. They're murderous, like, maniacs, uh, brainless guys. And, like, you know, they, they might not be the sharpest tools in the shed, but, you know, we see that, like, they're craftsmen. You know, they're survivalists, uh... They, you know, they live off the land. There's, you know, a, a lot of intrigue to be had in here. And everything is handled very delicately in the in this episode. Much like it was in The Mandalorian. So, a definite recommendation. If you were put off by the first episode, I really don't think anyone could possibly be put off by this second episode. I know that I was. And I thought it was fantastic and an example of... Um, just really what this series could be and what it should be and, 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 and it definitely was everything that i could have hoped that it would be um definitely a major improvement over the first episode uh, goes without saying um and i'm looking forward to all the episodes that follow and uh anyway guys let me know what you thought in the comments down below and please subscribe if you haven't already click the bell to get all the notifications when i post all my new videos I want to thank all my patrons for your continued support. Thanks again, guys. I will see you next time.